Good evening, guys. It's Tuesday night. No, it's not. It's Monday night. And that means we got a special guest for us tonight. Number 13 coming out of Oakland High School. Joe Peebles, number 13. Joe P <laughs> in the house. How you doing tonight, Joe? It's been so good to catch up for a minute or two, but I am so happy that you're here with us tonight. But I'm Berg, man. I'm happy to be here. You know, man, I've been a fan of the show since COVID. I mean, when I would every Tuesday night, I'd be locked and loaded, and especially with somebody I knew on the show. Man, I couldn't take my, take my eyes. I just love hearing the stories of everybody, uh, former players I played with and before and after me. It's just, it's just great, man. You do a great job. I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you. You know who else I got in the house with me? Who's that? One of Dothan, Alabama's city commissioners. Number eight from the Northview Cougars. A-OK, -okay, Aristotle Onassis Kirkland. I do. <laughs> What's up, Eric? Aristotle, that's my man. You know, that's no, I got to tell you a quick story about A-OK, -okay, how he turned yeah. my senior year, his junior year. He turned our state championship game around, and we ended up cruising to the wow. title. We're losing 7 nothing to the bad guys. They're yeah. driving again in the middle of the first quarter. They're inside the 10. Uh -huh. Our defensive tackle blows up an option. A-OK -okay is Johnny on the spot, scoops it 91 okay. yards later. He houses that one. Turns man, he never told game. me that story. He never told me that story, man. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you I threw four touchdown passes after that. We went 32-15. <laughs> but A-OK -okay <laughs> set the tone. He set it off. I got it. We got chicken wing. We got Wilbert Pryor in the house. Oh, my goodness. We got <laughs> like Jay Fleming in the house. Oh, man, they're turning out for you, Joe. Oh, man, that's my guy. Will Pryor, Chicken Way, that's my best friend, my best man. <laughs> man, y'all are in for a treat because Joe P has got a story. Right. Before we start from when you were just a little guy throwing the ball down the field, Joe, tell folks about living in Maryland and your awesome family. What's going on with the current version of the people's household? Oh, man, uh, doing great, man. I've been up here in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. for uh, 24 years now. We moved here in uh, 98. May of 98, I moved here by myself. Then we, I got married to my lovely wife, Candace, in 2000. Uh, Wilbur was there, Chicken Wang. And um, uh, we got three kids. Uh, the boys are 20 and 18. And uh, my little girl should be 13 in March. So we've been living here, and uh, they all raised them here, uh, right here in uh, Prince George's County here in Maryland. But uh, I've been working uh, for in the telecommunications industry for – uh, since 1993, since I left Vanderbilt, actually. And um, we made our home here, and uh, we've been real blessed. And I'm just glad to be here, man. Joe, you look like you could step onto the field right now and sling it about 50, 60 yards. I know you keep in good shape. If I could stand still and nobody uh, rush me, I could do it. <laughs> maybe but maybe it, one time before that arm kind of gives exactly. away a little bit. But, Joe, man, I, I can't even keep up with all. We got – Keystone Cop, Billy Smith in the house. We got hey, Billy. Coach Sheps in the house. Patrick yeah. Fitch. Fun fact, Patrick Fitch, my high school, same class as AOK. -OK. Mm -hmm. Pat was one of my tackles, and I outweighed him at 10 pounds. Right. Pat was a mean son of a gun back then. He still is mean. We got Royce hey, Love in the house. Man, the love bug. All, all kind of love for Joe P tonight. I knew oh, it. Man. I knew it. Good. Well, one of the beautiful things, I know we were only on the team together for one year, but one of the beautiful things that you brought to that quarterback room and to our team was your spirit. And mm -hmm. it was enthusiastic. It was, I love the sport. I'm here because I want to learn. I want to compete. I want to be better. I want to make my teammates better. And it's, you, it hadn't left you. It's still there. I know you got two boys who are athletes. I know you got a girl who is a little bit younger and she's into horses and there's that, there's some athleticism there too. Mm -hmm. How do you, and I'm sorry, but you're 50 now, but <laughs> how do you keep that athletic competitive fire burning a little bit? What, what do you do for either exercise or to just get some of that energy out these days? Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, like I said, if I could stand still and play a sport and throw the football, I would. So I stand still and I hit the golf ball now. So I try to get as best I, best I can uh, at hitting the golf ball, trying to get my score down. So that's kind of – that's my competitive as far as me participating. But uh, just watching my kids play sports, you know, both of my boys were 
I'd say above average, not great football players. Mm -hmm. And uh, my second son was actually a real good basketball player. And then my daughter, uh, she plays basketball and soccer. So she's good. So that's where I get my just watching them and get getting fired up for them and trying to get them fired up. But that's kind of what I do. But outside of that, you know, I might pick up a basketball myself every once in a while. But that's, that's about it. But I do, you know, stay steadily exercising. Stay, stay oh, good. You always keep that body moving, man. No oh, static, oh, yeah. nothing static. But we were comparing notes before we went live about how much more stressful it is rooting for your children as a parent, the stress levels versus when we played our own games. I can only imagine how it was for our parents, but being a parent and rooting for your kid, that's way more stressful, uh, it, at least in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. Especially playing when they're playing quarterback and the, everybody in the stands, they're counting on the quarterback. One incompletion and everybody in the stands, they're, they're on him. He's a bum! He's a bum! He's a bum. <laughs> exactly. Did they also wear number 13 in their dad's honor? Well, you know what? When they were in playing Pop Warner, they did. But after that, they just they did their own thing. They're wearing single digits. I'm like, a single digit quarterback? Come on, you know? <laughs> Now you see single-digit defensive linemen in the pros. It just makes no sense. But, uh, but Joe, you mentioned golf. I want—I know we're kind of a little bit all over the board, but you have, for many years now, you've had a charitable golf tournament, and you've got some former teammates who show up. What's the tournament, the genesis of it? What does it support? Where is it? How can we, uh, if any others who would like to either donate or participate, share with us a little bit about all of that? I'm glad you asked, Bernard. Uh, so we started the, um, we call it the Byron Motley Hero Golf Tournament. And Byron Motley was my stepfather. Mm -hmm. He passed away tragically uh, saving a kid from drowning. So this was in 2006, he passed away. Um, so we have the Hero Golf, he was an avid golfer as, you know, I was, I was he, he married my mother when I was 13 years old. So all those years, he tried to get me to pick up a golf club. I never would. I was like, no, I'm football, football. I don't, I don't want to play anything to do with golf. So he um, would go out every week. He'd go play with his friends. So we have a golf outing in his honor every third weekend in July in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's a fundraiser for the, uh, the foundation my, my, my wife and I started. Uh, it's called the JPJ Foundation. And you can go to the website, www.jpj, like Joe Peebles Jr., foundation.com. And you can uh, see all the information about the golf outing and also about the scholarships that we uh, raise every year. And Jeff Brothers has played. Jeff, Jeff's played every year. I mean, I love Jeff. He's one of my best friends now. Uh, you know, he always has been since college. And then um, Wilbert always supports. Uh, John Gromos came and played a couple of years. Um Let's see, uh, Robbie Young, Stump, um, they, who else, man? We've had, we have several Vanderbilt support. Uh, Big Josie, he comes out and plays when he was living in Murfreesboro. Um, I, many, many more, uh, but we oh, have a good time. Joe, that's just, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that you had to, to honor his memory. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful way that you're, you're doing it. But I have to ask, is Mark Johnson the best dressed golfer each year? He's <laughs> <laughs> he is. Stump comes out. Is he, he's matching head to toe. He's clean. He always pulls up in something fancy too. For honest, if it's not like a Maserati or something, he won't come. You know what I mean? You know. So I he's always Stump. So Stump and I were the same recruiting class. He's out of mm -hmm. Tarrant. I'm from South Alabama. We used to ride back and forth together. Mm -hmm. And I, I played golf with him in the past, and he was always the best dressed. By oh. far. <laughs> and Stump, you know, Stump, he always sponsors a team every year, and he'll usually have some some Vanderbilt people playing with him, too. Nice. Uh, so, nice. Yeah. Well, Joe, when we get finished, I'm going to put in the show notes the link to the foundation's website. Mm -hmm. So folks can, can take a look at that and, and decide to play or, or uh, donate, whatever it may be. I guess you're going to get uh, cranking back up in a couple of months. Oh, yeah. Uh, getting ready for this next July tournament. Absolutely. Yeah, we've already got the scholarship uh, applications on because what we do is we raise money for minority scholarships mm -hmm. that, uh, for any graduating senior from the Murfreesboro high schools. So we've been doing it for uh, now since 2001. So we've been doing this. Uh, we've been doing the scholarship foundation since wow. 2001, the golf tournament since 2007. But it all go all the money raised goes back to the scholarships. Well, that's fantastic, Joe. I applaud your efforts. I know that is paying it forward and I know it makes you guys feel feel good. 
The but book, speaking of Murfreesboro, speaking of Oakland Tech and and the back in the day, let's talk about some of your origin. What where'd you grow up? Let's talk about the high school because it has a wonderful tradition with sports. Mm -hmm. And how did Vanderbilt get on your radar or how did you get on Vanderbilt's radar? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, grew up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. At the time, there was only two high schools, Oakland and Riverdale. And I absolutely, my sister and all my family went to Oakland. So I was actually zoned to go to Riverdale. So my dad, when my parents were divorced, he went and lived in in uh, Oakland zone. I always said that was divine intervention for him to move to Oakland zone because I had to go. So I went to live with my dad. I went to Oakland High School, and uh, yeah, we we had success. We uh, went to the state championship uh, my senior year. Uh, eighty eight, fall of eighty eight, fall of eighty eight, mm -hmm. and the game before mine was Jeff Brothers' game at Brentwood Academy. He Brentwood, they won, mm -hmm. but uh, we lost, and uh, the state championship game at Vanderbilt. And uh, when I when I played there, I um I was like, man, I would you know kind of I would love to come here. Now I you know I was a pretty smart student, so I would knew academically. Uh, I could, I would uh, hopefully qualify, which I did. I got early admission um, mm -hmm. in the spring of '89, mm -hmm. and um, and I ended up coming to campus uh, for a Black Student Weekend, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with the campus. While I was there, the Black Student Weekend, I I, I uh, my host was Tommy Davis. His roommate was Eric Jones, so I was in the room uh, on the door on the tower floor with uh, both. Uh, with Eric Jones, they were cutting each other's hair, man. We just rolling back and forth. And I, I admired Eric from afar, being the quarterback and being the Heisman Trophy candidate, and uh, just seeing him on the floor. And um, I um, said, man, you know, I'm definitely seriously thinking about playing football. With, you know, after I've been admitted, and I just had a great time on campus that weekend. And um, when I showed up on campus, we actually came early for another minority engineering program, mm -hmm. and I would come out to practices. And I would see, uh, you know, the guys practicing, um, uh, just working out. And I, was, you know, I went and talked to Coach Brown. I just walked in. You know, he, he, nobody ever called me. I'm, I'm a true definition of a walk-on. <laughs> I, walk, I walked into Coach Brown's office. He said, I was like, Coach Brown, I'm Joe Peebles. He says, I know you. I watched you play. I'm like, oh, I was like impressed. You know, he's like, he's like, and he was, he was shocked that I wanted to walk on. Like, like I didn't have any, you know offers and I was like <laughs> and then the fact that he welcomed me on the team Bernard I was like you know what I'm here and I'm ready to roll and uh that's how it all, how it all started <laughs> well you know back in the day that quarterback room was was full and when I mean full yeah. there was always room for someone else but we had a bunch of us in there absolutely but the things that I remember one we learned a hell of a lot from coach Christopher and coach Brown of course but although it was hard work and long hours, it just became fun to hang out with those guys. Eric Jones is as funny a human being as I've ever been around. And when you put him in that scenario and then you become one of his targets, that wasn't so much funny, but it was fun <laughs> to just be around. Uh, John Gromos and Tim Richardson. And there's a couple of guys that because of our age difference, you weren't around. Yeah heels and doc and it was just you know it was just a a, a a fun time to be around and learning some real football oh yeah just being in a room uh with coach brown and and talking to the gromos and you and uh healy and just going through the complex offense i'm sitting back in the back I was like man i'm just you know i was just happy to be there and hear it all and like you said it was yourself gromos healy doc uh brothers and myself and uh, another guy, Drew Robinson, you might not remember Drew, but Drew also walked on with me. Uh, he was for NBA locally, but he he transferred after the first year. But, uh, yeah, we, we had seven quarterbacks in there. I'm, I'm looking at like, wow, there's seven guys <laughs> trying to play for one position. And you, uh, you talk about an athlete who just signed on to, to hang out with us. Mm -hmm. T. Banks is in the house. T. Banks. T. That's Banks. my man. That's my man. He's I'm, a promoter extraordinaire. Now he's up yeah. in the Nashville area doing some good things with real estate. But yep. Joe, what? Let's talk about that that transition coming out of Oakland High, Murfreesboro. Now you're, you know, Nashville then is not Nashville now. Nashville now is, it's like an anthill. There's just so much, so many people. Mm -hmm. 
but I like to think of the late eighties Nashville still kind of sleepy, kind of small and particularly downtown. It was nothing like it is now, but still transitioning from Murfreesboro to Nashville from Oakland to Vanderbilt. That's a big jump for anybody. Now, academically, I know you were inclined and you can handle yourself, but talk, talk to us about that, that year, that freshman year, did you get red shirted? Or what was what was going on with you? Yeah, so like I like I said, Bernard, I uh, I truly came on academic scholarships and uh, Pell grants, and you know I was blessed to be able to. I think I might have had to pay two thousand dollars to go my my first year, you know, and we scraped that up, and I was able to come. But I um I had a ball um, when I like I said there was a minority engineering program that I was invited to, and we came on campus about six weeks before the regular students, not before the football team, just for the regular students. So we were there six weeks, kind of they kind of inducted us into how college life would be. So, you know, I drove my, my car up there and I was probably one of the only ones that came with a car to this minority in, engineering program. Mm -hmm. And I would take all the kids around, we go place to place, but really it was a real um, nice introduction to what study life would be at Vanderbilt. And they put us up in the towers. So we were in the towers for six weeks before we ended up having to go and move over to Branscombe in the freshman dorm. Before, and that's right before uh, football practice was started. But um, I got a really good, real good jump on just about everybody in my freshman class because of that engineering program. And we would go to uh, study labs and we had to meet with professors. And it's a really good program. I wish they would reintroduce that at Vanderbilt because I think it gives the, the freshman a, a real big jump. So I was ready to roll. I, you know, I was an engi uh, electrical engineering major mm -hmm. uh, to start, and I finished it with engineering science. Uh, but being in an engineering school really, um, really um, made me get disciplined right away. Well, I was going to say, Joe, that's no joke of a program. Yeah. And you, you had to, your learning curve was real quick. Mm -hmm. I, I, too, I started, I took a, a two classes the semester in, in summer school before actually starting as a freshman because I, I wanted to, to see what it was about. And I was rehabbing my, my elbow, I had a little surgery. And I too lived in, in the towers, lived next door to some upper upperclassmen, big linemen who wanted nothing to do with me at the time. But you're right, it, it, it is getting you thrown in sink or swim pretty quick. But I bet by the time the, the freshman reported, you know, you had a little bit of experience on folks, a little more comfort, if you will. I did. Yep. But were you also working out during that summertime? Oh, yeah. So once I, like I said, when I got on campus um, from uh, with the engineering program, mm -hmm. I, I went and talked to Coach Brown and Coach Brown said, hey, we want you here. Um, you're welcome to work out in the gym. So I was actually over there with the guys who were there for the summer working out with coach Bates and uh, those guys. So I was, you know, so I was, I was there working and I was super excited to be there. Um, I would, I would go out there and uh, throw when they would work out and they would, they would kind of, kind of let me in. So I got, a, I got a jump. And even when the freshmen reported uh, the first day uh, when all the football freshmen reported, and I remember just like it was yesterday meeting all the guys and um, it, it was a good, it was a really good time. Cause I felt like uh, I felt like I belonged. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, like I said, Jeff Brothers, we had a we had a room. We had a room of freshman quarterbacks before you guys showed up, Bernard. The freshman quarterbacks we had, you know, was myself, Jeff Brothers, uh, Big Greg Jones from Texas. He was actually a quarterback. Robbie yeah. Young was quarterback. Chris Donnelly was quarterback. Yeah. So and then a Drew. So there were seven quarterbacks that came in on the fresh in the freshman class. <laughs> and uh, those you were the so only one who stayed quarterback the whole time. I wrote, I, oh, well, I got a story. In the spring of 90, I did take a stint, a stint on defense. But for, <laughs> that's another story for you. I'll tell you that. That's interesting because yeah. Donnelly became an all-SEC DB. Oh, Greg yeah. Jones ended up going on defense. Yep. We heard from Jeff last week that he started out quarterback, ended up on defense and kick yep. return. I don't know, Drew. Mm -hmm. He didn't stick around long enough. Yep. Uh, Rob Young ended up on defense. Yeah, so it was it was the power of the peoples. I'm the telling power, you, man. yeah, for the people. Yeah, real quick story though. So in the spring of '90, so I just, just fast forward. So I, I did redshirt my uh, uh, freshman year. Just about just about all of us redshirt except for like Robbie 
uh, Alan Young and uh, Tony Jackson. Those guys actually got significant playing time. Yeah, but sure just did. about the rest of the freshman class, we all redshirted and uh, just practiced. We you know, ran scout team and had a had a great time doing it. I just love football, man. I just love to show up and practice. And even though I put on the other team's jersey all week, you know, I just had fun out there slinging it. And they put me a receiver. I did just about everything. It was just fun to be, you know, that first year. But at the end of uh, when spring practice was about to start, Coach Brown comes to me and says, hey, you know, uh, did you ever play defense? And I was like, I don't know if he felt sorry for me. He seriously wanted to find a spot for me because he knew the quarterback room was deep, right? It was super deep. And um, and he says, uh, hey, why don't you uh, go and uh, talk to Coach Case? Mm -hmm. And Coach Case, and when I went to Coach Case, I'm thinking in my mind, He's going to put me in free safety. Now, I played linebacker in college. I started linebacker in college, uh, in high, school. In high school, on a state yeah. championship finalist team. Now, I know how to play defense. So, if you put me in free safety at all four, nine, five flat of me, <laughs> I might be able to hang. But Coach Case, because we we're, were we were hurting for DBs, he puts me at cornerback in the SEC. So, but I'm talking about the contest for me and Jeff Brothers. He put Jeff in a position that he could play, and he put me at corner. So I'm at cornerback, now, Bernard. And I tell you the truth, man, that spring of 90, I'm at hard corner, like playing behind Robbie Young, and I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm seriously hanging in there because we had a there was a cover one and a cover six. A cover one was was man to man, and I hated that. That I was toast all day. <laughs> what put me in cover six is basically a strong safety, free safety spot. Yeah. And I, w I had interceptions. I was playing like, not, like I thought this was going to be my spot. But it was just in, a, in the free safety spot. But he put me at corner, and he had Eric Weir, Derek Gregg, Bunk mm -hmm. Civilian running fly patterns on me. <laughs> it was ugly. It was ugly. So by the time spring practice ended, they, hey, Coach Case was like, hey, uh, We'll put you back over there with the quarterbacks. <laughs> you, you became known as one of those uh, those zone coverage DBs, yeah. not one of those man coverage DBs. I'm I'm telling you, number had he kept if he put me at free safety, I would have I would have played, but I would have had a chance. <laughs> I'm not saying I would have been Jeff Brothers, but I would have had a chance. Well, I tell you what, it was probably great experience learning that side of the ball for a quarterback. Yeah, it was fun. It was. Yeah. I, I just like yeah. to play, man. I yeah, bet. Well, well, Joe, did you, at some point, you actually transitioned from being a walk-on to getting a scholarly. And oh, that yeah. is not easy in the SEC, particularly at Vanderbilt. And yeah. I know that was a proud day for you, but this predated all these videos that we now see where the coach makes the announcement team goes crazy. But take us to the moment you learned you were being put on scholarship. All right, yeah, that, that's probably one of the greatest days of my life, uh, Bernard. So we, now we fast forward. Now this is my third year, my junior. This is after Coach Donardo mm -hmm. had taken over for uh, Coach Brown, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the spring of '92. Okay. The spring of '92, um, Coach Brown, uh, I mean Coach Donardo, um, and you know, and this, now again, Healy uh, mm -hmm. decided he wasn't going to come back for his next, for his last year. So only two quarterbacks, uh, three quarterbacks, myself, Doc, and uh, Charles Fant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, you know, we're only three quarterbacks. So I'm getting a ton of reps in, in the spring. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm having like the best spring of my life. I mean, I'm, and, and, and then even in the spring game, I end up running, running for 100 yards and uh, throwing for over 100 yards in the spring game. So right before the spring game, you know, like I'm having such a, a good spring, uh, Coach Nardo, he, he, get, he gathers on, you know, when Coach Nardo's in the room, you got to be, everybody's sitting up straight and looking straight. And you can't even cough, cough in the room. And Coach Nardo said, hey, you know, Joe people stand up. I'm like, oh, no, man. Uh, what have I done? Because, you know, when Coach Donato calls you out, something bad has happened, you know. Yeah. He said, people stand up. I got, he said, you know what? I've been meaning to tell you something for a long time, and I got to tell you in front of everybody. You're on full scholarship now. I'm like, oh man, the whole cr the, everybody was jumping up and down and screaming and crying, oh. and uh, it, it was it was one of the greatest uh, moments that I've had, man. So, oh, Jim, what a day! Did you call home that day? 
man, I called my mom, I called my dad, I called my stepdad, I called everybody. It's like, you're not going to awesome. believe this, <laughs> but That's so we're through paying. <laughs> awesome, Joe. I'm so proud of that story. We got Bill Sullivan who says to tell you hello. Big Sully. What's up, man? Sully in the house. We got Alfonso Harvey in the house. Big Fonz. What's up, man? Guys, guys, I'm talking with Joe Peebles. Out of Murfreesboro, number 13, goes from a pure walk-on, walking into Watson Brown's office saying, hey, coach, I'm walking on. Well, you got a spot for me. To later earning a, a scholarship under Donardo. And what a wonderful day because – Hard work, dedication, not just your athleticism, but it's that hard work, it's that dedication, it's being a teammate, it's being a team player that ended up catching the eyes of the coaches. And, and Joe, that's one of those stories that when they talk about Vanderbilt football, it's it's folks like you, frankly, that are the backbone of the program. And, mm -hmm. you know, we never play as much as we want to play in right. the game. We never, uh -huh. we never have those all all star games and and weeks or excuse me in seasons. We have a few, but we all in our mind are every bit the athletic athletic uh, competitor as anybody else on that team. Uh -huh. and that's what I want to talk about, Joe. You you come into a room. There's already six quarterbacks or however many in the room. Uh -huh. It's always a stacked room, and the guys ahead of you are more experienced they may or may not be more athletic but they're more trained in the system because you're mm -hmm. the new guy yep but i want to talk about what was it about your dna what was it that was in your drive joe to stick around because at vanderbilt being a walk-on is no joke you're paying your way to go to school you're then asking to earn a spot to help out the team, knowing full well the odds are stacked very much against you from even dressing out, much less earning a scholarship, earning playing time. What yep. can you describe what it was that inner fire, that inner strength that you had to yep. do what you did? I tell you what, Bernard, I can only uh, just lean on the fact that I just love football. I mean, especially coming out of high school. I I can I couldn't imagine going back to my hometown on a break or something and tell them that I'm not playing football anymore. <laughs> you know, I absolutely, absolutely love football. And I will say along the way, there was always something that kept me going. And I, I can just, you know, for an example, um, so my red shirt freshman year, my second year, um, I'm, I'm starting on the hands team. <laughs> so we, we there's, on the special team, there's, there's a hands team. Now this is a team that's not, guaranteed to go out there, especially at Vanderbilt. You know, we, we're never like ahead to try to secure a lead. Like, but I'm starting. So I only mention that because that gets me to travel. So I go to every, I travel in every game, my red shirt freshman year. Now it gets better. The week, the Auburn week that you and I talked about a little bit earlier, the Auburn week, um, Doc Wilson just got hurt the game before. He had like a high ankle sprain, so he couldn't go. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Brothers, un, you know, unfortunately, his, his dad passed away. Mm -hmm. So only two quarterbacks in the room is he, are Healy and myself mm -hmm. all week. He's taking the number one snaps. I'm taking the number two snaps. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, including the walkthrough, mm -hmm. I'm taking the number two snaps. So I'm so excited. I'm like, hey, this is this is about to happen. This is when thing. This is my second year. It's that time for me to get out on the field and I'm showing what I got. So, so we getting ready for Auburn week. I'm playing. I remember Thor Erickson. You remember Thor? Thor comes, <laughs> he knocks on my door. He says, Peebles, you better be ready. He just slams the door hard. I'm like, man, I'm getting a little nervous. I'm like, ready. So, so we go down, we're driving to go down to Auburn. I'm in my whole hometown. I got about 10 to 15 people coming from Murfreesboro, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, everybody's at the game and i even had a girlfriend at auburn so i was like hey god is working this thing out for me <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna make this happen. so sure enough um healy gets hurt on the second the second quarter of that game i run over to coach sloan i'm ready to warm up helmet on buckle ready to rock but lo and behold jeff actually made the trip 
uh, even though he hadn't practiced all week, he did make the bus because he said, you know what? My dad would have wanted me to be here. Mm -hmm. And Jeff is one of my best friends in the world. So, and I love him. And he's, he's one of the greatest men I know. And uh, the fact that he got on that bus, you know, I was a little nervous. I'm thinking, okay, well, he, he, uh, he could play. He, and he warmed up and everything, but I still took the snaps with the twos and, and ready to roll. I run over and lo and behold, Coach Sloan looks over and said, Jeff, get in there. I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. This is my time. The game wasn't out of hand. It was second quarter. You know, it ended up being out of hand. But I tell you, man, that was that was my mark. So things like that actually happened along the way to keep me fired up. It's like, you know what? If it could if it could have happened in my second year, it could happen again before I leave here. You know, so that things like that happen all the time. And then getting the scholarship, uh, having a great spring practice, uh, going into my last year, I was number two on the depth chart uh, in Coach Nardo's last year. And um, again, had the great spring. So it was just me and Doc, you know, and then lo and behold, my senior year, three talented freshman quarterbacks show up, three um, come in. And they put them all in front of me, all three of them. After, there's no doubt that I earned that number two spot. But anyway, that's my that's my career in a nutshell. I'm telling you, man. Well, you know what I'm hearing, Joe? I'm hearing you're you're ever the optimist, my friend. It would have been very easy to get frustrated. It would have been very easy for you to transfer at that point. It would have been very easy for you to go negative against the coaching staff and not be a team player, but you were. Yep. And, and that's whether you knew it at the time or not, those are some of those life lessons that life just isn't fair sometimes. Oh, yeah. But instead of sticking your head in the sand and saying to hell with it, you kept after it. You kept after it. And you kept yeah. after it. And you yeah. earned your degree. And you went on and you've had a successful career, but Joe, I want to pause for just a minute because we got a whole bunch of Commodores who rolled in. Sully says he was there that day you got awarded your scholarship, and that was Yeah, yeah he was. He was. We got Gary Kimball is in the house. Uh, yeah. Demonic Coger is here. Kenny Cole is with us, so thank you, fellas. Talking to Joe Peebles, and Joe, I admire you more then I admired you back then because now I know your whole story or starting to learn most of that story because those who of us who were on scholarship might not have appreciated it nearly as much as somebody walked on and then later earned that scholarship through their, their dedication. So I, I applaud that. I applaud you. And I suspect you've shared a little bit of that with your two grown sons along the way. And and also your daughter, who's kind of coming from coming from behind the younger daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, do do you did you appreciate those things as much back then, or is it th as things have have you have you matured in age, have they crystallized in your mind about what they meant back then? Yeah, I mean, I tell you, I use a lot of lessons that I learned uh, back at Vanderbilt, and again, I keep bringing up Jeff Brothers, man, because it's because I admire him so much. So. At the end of um, uh, our the spring of 1992, after going to um, uh, having a good good spring, Coach Brown, I walk into Coach Brown. I mean, not Coach Brown, Coach Leonardo, and he says, "Hey, Joe, you had a good spring. So, so how you, how do you feel like you you played?" I was like, "I said, Coach, you know, I think I I think I did great, but you know what? I'm just willing to help the team out." as much as I can. I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. Mm -hmm. On the contrast, Jeff Brothers, the year before when he was still playing quarterback, he says, he walks into the coach's office and says, hey, I'm going to be the starter. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I, I, I plan to be the starter, uh, the starting quarterback on this team. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that because Jeff told me that story and he didn't back down. So I transferred that on to my boys. I was like, don't ever go into a coach a job, uh, you go and talk to your boss, don't ever go to them and say, you're just happy to be here. Mm -hmm. That's the mistake I made uh, back, you know, in the in 92, rather than saying, hey, I'm only not only happy to be here, but 
I'm going to take that job. I want that job and I'm going to earn it. And, you know, and I'm going to show you uh, that that I deserve it. And so that's what I that's what I pass on to them and other uh, young men that I've coached. I say, hey, you know, don't don't be passive. You can't be passive. And that's kind of how I've handled my my working career, too. Now, I never step step down or take a second seat. You know, if there's a job that I want, I go for it. Uh, you know, I don't uh, take a seat back to anybody. If they ask me if I want it, I'm like, absolutely, I want it. And I'll, and I'll take the challenge right now. So that's kind of how I've kind of patterned my life. I, had, I learned so much through that Vanderbilt experience because, you know, I because I was just, when Coach Donardo gave me the scholarship, I was appreciative. I, I loved it. It helped my family out tremendously. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any bills. And I was thinking to myself, man, this is the best it can get. You know, but then when he gave me the opportunity to say, hey, do you want this job or not? And I was like, you know what? I'm just happy to be here. He said, okay, if you're just happy to be here, I got three guys. I'm I'm recruiting Kenny Simon, Cedric Douglas, Ronnie Gordon. They want the position, you know? And uh, and when I, sure enough, when I showed up at Bell Buckle the next year, uh, I was number five on a depth chart. I was like, this is, this is impossible. I just had the greatest spring of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how could you put me how could you put me at number five so that's kind of how that worked out but i i blame myself uh some for that for just um the passiveness of just being satisfied you can't it's hard to be you don't want to be uh greedy but uh you can't be satisfied yeah. and that's kind of the lesson i learned joe that it, it is a a great life lesson it's a great story and you did you learned learned a lot from from that um but i keep going back to how easy it could have been for you to leave mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to leave the sport to leave the school and i give you the credit the forethought the 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 insight the maturity to not to stick it out to get that degree to get that motivation wherever it comes from internally and I think that's the most important thing that I take away from from what I'm hearing from you. So I, I know I know you got to be proud of that as as well. Yeah. Uh, had it been had we had the transfer portal today, like yeah, back back then, how we had today, how easy it would have been. Yeah. I absolutely just because I love football so much, I probably would have you know went to Middle Tennessee State University or you know other schools that you know had called me before. At the time, they were Division Two and uh, something, something like that, Bernard. But uh, you know, I love Vanderbilt. I was there to get the degree. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I walked on. Nobody asked me to play football. I played just because I wanted to play. I loved it. And a lot of things, like I said, happened along the way to keep to make me keep thinking that I could do this. You know, I, I'm here. And um, so that, that's what's built into your heart. Yeah, that, that comes from from the inner fire, but. Joe, I want to welcome Hunter McCarty, Beth Graves, Dodd. Thank you guys for coming. Mm -hmm. I, an, I want to pivot a little bit. I want to know two things. How fresh are your DJ skills and what was your <laughs> DJ name? <laughs> Thank you, Sully, for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm fresh. Uh, Sully, I'm ready, man. I uh, So it's funny you ask. Uh, during COVID, during COVID, Bernard, we, um, every Friday night, we would have like we get on zoom just like we are now and we had special hookups where you play music so me and like three other djs would play music for anybody that showed up and we had nothing to do but so during covid man we would we, we just jam every friday night and we call it a freestyle friday so hey, i'm kind of y'all in the audience right now <laughs> who got that invitation I, <laughs> I didn't see any invitation <laughs> You know, no, I got to know, what was your DJ name? Uh, my DJ name was Wodies. Wodies, W-O-D-I-E-S, and that's a long story behind that name. But that's my that's been my name ever since um, she high school. I showed up, Bernard, on, on a, uh, at a car at a Plymouth Horizon, an uh, 85 Plymouth Horizon. That's how I, I showed up at Vanderbilt. On the front of it had Wodies. And, and people would make fun of me. They would laugh at me. I parked it at, at, at like the Tri Delta house one day, and they were like, they told me, uh, where Cabin Camp, where, where everyone was right across the street from Towers, right? Yeah. So I parked it right there one day, overnight, gone. They're like, no, there's nobody named Wodies here. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> so yeah, that was that's been my nickname, man. And uh, that's um, I'm still a D. I still do. I do weddings now today. So if somebody called me to do a wedding, I uh, I still do that. Uh, that's and my hobby. Have, have your boys picked it up as well? I tried because I have I got so much gear here. Bernard, I told Trey, my oldest, he's at Towson University now up in Maryland. Used to be Towson State. When we were in school. And I said, hey, man, you should take this gear because you could make a lot of money if you want to DJ parties, you know, or something like that. Since you're not playing football, you got to get, you know, do something to be popular on campus. And he never would take it. You know, it's, it's easy to carry the DJ the parties. But yeah. That yeah. was that's dad stuff. We're gonna do all right. I got a question for you from Chicken Wing. You ready? Uh oh. Uh -oh. I'm ready. Ask Joe if he was the coach that USC quarterback Caleb Williams referenced <laughs> in his Heisman speech that didn't play him at quarterback. <laughs> that is funny. To answer the question, the short answer is no. So Caleb Williams, the 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 Heisman Trophy winner. He played on my son's uh, in my son's program. We had a group here out of in Maryland called the Charles County Spartans. Um, my son played the grade right below. He's younger than uh, Caleb, but Caleb like like um, he, what do you call? It? He got it, not held back, but um, re reclassed. He reclassed, uh, you know. So he ended up being on the same team as Trey. And so he, they were playing, and um, <laughs> one of the other coaches I won't name any names. Didn't even, he didn't even play quarterback. He played free safety. He wasn't even a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, but he wanted to play quarterback, but it didn't put him there. So, yeah, when he made that that Heisman <laughs> introduction, he was talking about. I know who he was talking about, but yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> man, Mr. Pryor, he gets deep. He knows the stories, doesn't he? Oh man, he knows. He knows everything, man. He knows everything. What, what are the chances of you DJing at one of the the golf tournament outings? At my at my golf outing, mm -hmm. like well. Actually, funny you ask. So we always have a social event after the golf outing, mm -hmm. and uh, I do DJ that. Nice. So yeah, so nice. I still, I still DJ Bernard. I still, uh, I still got it. <laughs> yeah, we we got a few more minutes, and I've so enjoyed our our catching up a little bit. And you've had all kind of love tonight, man. There, when we get finished, you're going to have to get into those comments because you're going to have to defend yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> In there, but guys, I'm talking with Joe Peebles. That's exactly Sully says to, to, to Wilbert every quarterback secretly wants to play defense at some point because <laughs> they all is, think man. they can do it. I, I spent one day in high school playing defense, it didn't take long. I went straight back to where I, where I should have been. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, and Coach Cage put me at free safety, man. I still, I, I still have dreams. What thing about it, man, I tell you, I tell my wife this all the time. I'll wake up from a dream at least twice or three times a year. And the dream is always the same. It's my year and I'm about to go out and play at Vanderbilt. That's I have the dream. I mean, it, it's it, I, I won't say it tortures me, but it's always the same dream. And, and something always happens where I can't get there. My helmet won't fit. I can't find my helmet or. You know something that keeps me from getting on the field you know what i mean so but yeah but i, I you know i have a lot of fond memories um i enjoyed vanderbilt so much of friends i've met a lot of friends that another story that i tell my my sons is that hey when you go to college you gotta meet people outside of the friends you either came to school with or the friends on the football team mm -hmm. i met a lot of friends you know of course especially in the engineering school that I'm still great friends with today, you know, just from a business standpoint and just from just friendships. But uh, we we still we're still real close. Uh, we're still real tight. And uh, I talk to them a lot. And I never would deny my Vanderbilt football friends like Derek Gregg. I talk to Carlos Thomas. I talk to every day. Um, Wilbur, of course, Wilbur. Uh, I talk to TJ, Tony Jackson quite a bit. And uh, we st we're still pretty tight. So I never would. Um, uh, forget, you know, or regret being a part of that family. I'm so glad to, to hear that, Joe, because there's so many guys who played ball, not just at Vanderbilt, but probably any school, they get so caught up in those four or five years and they don't break out of the cycle of football. 
They're just there to, to, and maybe that's enough for a lot of guys, just mm-hmm. having the teammates and the camaraderie and that, that. But I truly think if you want to experience the full experience of being a college student athlete, you've got to do what you just said. And far too many of us, excuse me, far not enough of us take advantage of that because you had enough forethought. Again, it's that maturity that we keep coming back to that you had. You may not have recognized it, but you did it because football only lasts for so long. If you don't have that infrastructure, those friendships, those relationships, that's what the rest of life is about. Either in socially, uh, professionally, whatever it may be. And I'm so happy to hear that that was part of your experience about making those additional friendships and keeping and maintaining them. Absolutely. I mean, like I said earlier, when I showed up knowing that I wasn't the greatest football player, I showed up knowing I wasn't going to the NFL, even though I had those aspirations, I kind of knew I better focus on these books, <laughs> you know? So when I, that's why I stuck in, I stayed in engineering. That's what I was there for to get the degree and to move on. And I just loved football. I mean, there's nothing, I just, you know, it just had to be part of my life. I mean, I loved the, the athletic part of it, the working out, the being with teammates. And um, even though things weren't working out the way that I wanted them to, I wouldn't, I, I don't regret it not one bit because uh, I, I enjoyed uh, every part of it. It, and, it uh, helped to shape who you later became. Yeah, absolutely. You know? All right, I got a I got a name to throw out there for you. You may or may not recognize this name. You sitting down? I'm sitting down. <laughs> Alvin Harper. <laughs> I do. What I does do. that name mean to you from your Vanderbilt days? So I mentioned earlier that uh, my red shirt, I mean my my red shirt year, my freshman year, true freshman year. My senior that, year, yeah. Your senior year, you know, I whatever. T- Whatever team we were playing that year, I was either going to be the quarterback, the receiver, or the, or the running back. So Alvin, he, who's really my – he's actually my cousin-in-law. And uh, so I, I know him real well. I'm real good friends. And uh, But we were playing Tennessee uh, our freshman year. And you remember we went up there and played them. Uh, uh, but they needed Alvin to be um, – they needed me to play Alvin, receiver. And they wanted me – this dude keep doing slant routes right in right into Demond Winston so he could take my head off. Coach Christopher was like, "Keep running it, keep running it," you know. And I would do it, and, every, and I cut across right in front of him, and I catch it on him every time because that's the pattern that Tennessee ran. They ran Alvin like on a short, mm-hmm. a short post or a slant, and I would go out there with my chin strap unbuckled like Alvin. <laughs> I would go out there and kill him. So yeah, I had a I had a great time with the scout team that year. But yeah, Alvin, uh, I think he torched us that day too. Well, did I ever apologize for throwing the ball every time for the De- mind to just crunch you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think he did. Daryl Griffin says to tell you hello, Joe P. Griff, what's up, man? That's we're, my man, we're Griff. Toward the end of our, our conversation with Joe. And you know, Joe, in the weeks leading up to, to you and I setting up tonight, to your credit, to a man who learned that you were coming on the show, Two things were were typically said to me. It's about time we hear from Joe. And there's no greater friend than Joe. And that second comment is one of the the best compliments a person can have. Oh, yeah. So I know that attitude you had as an 18, 19, 20-year-old hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The friendships you've developed over the last decades hasn't changed. So it's it's been my loss to not have been in your life the last 30 years, but I'm glad we've reconnected tonight and it's it's been a pleasure. Oh yeah. I mean I, I appreciate it, Bernard. I'm glad to be here, man. And, and you know, just one other story on that note. What I would do is on every Sunday morning, I would go to uh go to church. So I would wake up even at even at school, even though we just had a game the day before, and um everybody knew that. When I, I'd roll out early Sunday morning, I'd go to church at the Fifth Chapel. Mm-hmm. And um, so almost everybody on the team took a chance to, hey, if you're going to church, 
Joe P is going to church. Y'all want to jump in car with. So I would take like two or three guys with me, it, rotate in and out. And things like that, you know, to hear people say that, yeah, well, I remember yeah, Joe wanted to, uh, he went to church. He wanted to take us to church every Sunday. And that really made me proud to hear, hear stuff like that. Um, but outside of the football realm, outside of school, just remember that, you know, that I was always trying to be a good guy and always trying to be a friend to somebody. And uh, I do uh, I do appreciate those kind words. You know, in, in closing, that's what team sports teaches us. Now, granted, you got that basics. You got the, the, the DNA from your folks and they molded you as a young child to appreciate these things. But then it's further enhanced when you're a teammate. And Joe, there's no finer compliment than remaining teammates. And in the lives, how many guys have you mentioned tonight? And there's countless more. I know there's a lot more that you're in contact with, not daily or weekly, but maybe monthly, et cetera. But they know they can count on you. You're a teammate. And that's the ultimate compliment around here. I'm glad to have called you my teammate for a year. I'm glad to to reconnect with you tonight. So, Joe, let's continue to do what you do and anchor Absolutely. down. Anchor down, baby. Appreciate you. Stick tight before I say, after I sign off. But, guys, we got more to come. We got coach, one of the coaches next week. So, y'all going to definitely need to stick around next Tuesday, next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Y'all have a good week. Take care. <laughs>